This is the answer to the question that everybody wants to know. Why are people saying that you shouldn't use global scope with Kotlin coroutines? Why you should be very careful with it? Uh, what are what are kind of the main pitfalls and the main things that you need to actually watch out for? So if you've been around Kotlin development or Android and using Kotlin for any amount of time, I'm sure you've come across a blog post or two, or maybe people, somebody sending out a tweet, a post on Reddit, a video, somebody saying that, hey, maybe you should be careful about this global scope thing. Uh, it's, it's not as good as some people say it is. There's things you gotta be careful for, basically. So I was definitely confused about this at first. It's not really obvious, I think, why you should be careful with global scope. So I prepared an example that will showcase the, and, and I'll talk about the reasons why you need to be careful with it. And m probably in most cases, you want to avoid it completely. Although I'm not gonna say it's completely useless. Like there's definitely a, um, uh, a need that global scope could fill potentially, I see. So let's take a look at Android Studio and let's go through this example. So I have some code here in a main activity. It's pretty simple. I just have a global parent job. It's a late init. Uh, I have a function called main, which is down here. It does nothing right now. I have a button in the layout. And when I click that button, I'll actually bring the app on the screen here just so you can kind of see it. It's just a, uh, one, a simple layout with a button that says click me. That's this button right here. If it gets clicked, the parent job gets canceled. So whatever jobs are running inside of that parent should also be canceled. This is a, a coroutine uh, default property. If you have children coroutines within some job, if you cancel the parent, all of the children also get canceled. We're gonna come back to that point when we start talking about global scopes. That's one of the major key concepts. So I have a, a single function in here called work. It's a suspend function. It just delays for 3000 milliseconds and then says work is done and then prints out the thread that the work was done in. Should be no surprises here. Even if you're like fairly new to coroutines, nothing should be surprising here. So one of the things I just mentioned there was if a parent job is canceled, the children jobs within that parent will also be canceled. This is a default coroutine, I guess, feature you would call it, but that is, uh, that is not the case with global scope. And this is probably the most um, this is kind of the thing that does it for me why I would say, you know, generally what you want to stay away from global scope and it's because any children jobs within a, a, a job if they're started by a global scope with the global scope, they don't sync correctly to the parent. So if the parent gets canceled, those those children jobs keep continue running and I'm going to show you an example and uh, illustrate what I'm talking about. So I'm going to write a bunch of code in here inside of the main function and I'm going to skip the video ahead because I don't think there's a lot of point in you just watching me type this out. Okay, so first I've just declared a variable called start time. It just gets the current time in milliseconds. Then a log that says, or print line that says starting parent job. Now I'm going to create that parent job. So I'm going to say parent job, which is that global variable that I have declared up here. I'm going to say uh, parent job equals a coroutine scope. So coroutine scope, you can launch it, launch it using whatever dispatcher. It's not important. Just the fact that you're launching the job and setting the parent job is the most important thing. And now inside of this parent job, I'm going to launch two more jobs. So I'm going to call launch. So launch and in, then inside of launch, I want to do work one, work one. And then I'm going to launch a second job that just does work two. So all this is gonna do, if you take a look at our work function, is delay for 3000 milliseconds. It'll say work one is done, work two is done, and it'll print the thread in both cases. Now, we need a way to detect when the parent job is complete. So we're gonna use something called, we're gonna use a invoke on completion on the parent job. So I'm gonna write uh, parent job dot invoke on completion. Now this, this Lambda takes a throwable optionally. This is a, a nullable throwable. So essentially this invoke on completion will get called no matter what happens, whether the job was canceled, whether it completed, whatever, no matter what, this invoke on completion will, call, will uh, get called. The difference here is gonna be if the throwable, so if the throwable, throwable, if that equals, if that doesn't equal null, so does not equal null, that means that parent job was canceled for some reason and there's some throwable associated with it. But if there is no error and the job completes normally, then we'll have this else block running. So inside here, I'm just gonna write done in system current time in milliseconds, subtracting the start time. So that'll give you the, the time delta between the start time and the finish time. And then likewise in the throwable section here, if there's a throwable message, I'm gonna say something similar, but with a cancellation. So just job was canceled after some time, just so that we know whether there was a cancellation or it completed normally. So now I'm gonna run this and let's take a look at the, the log. So I press shift F10 to run this and I'm gonna open up the log here. You can see it's starting parent job. 
it should say work one is done on the main thread, work two is done on the main thread, and the whole thing completed in 3200 milliseconds roughly. So we know because it completed in 3200 milliseconds that both jobs were running simultaneously, they were running in parallel, and then they both completed in about 3000 milliseconds because we have our delay 3000 milliseconds. So at this point, everything looks, looks good, right? Everything is cool. Now let's introduce the possibility of a cancellation. So I'm going to bring the app on the screen here and I'm going to bring the expand the log just so you can see. Rerunning the app, I'm going to press Shift F10 again here and uh, we'll take a look. So it's running, starting parent job. I'm going to click cancel. Now notice the job says job was canceled after 2000 milliseconds and notice we don't get those, those completion messages. So the job was definitely canceled and also the children were cleaned up and they did not run to completion. So this is good. This is like the ideal situation that we want. We have uh, children jobs running in a parent. The parent gets canceled for some reason. The children jobs also get canceled. That's okay. Now let's introduce global scope and see how this changes things. So to use global scope, what you gotta do is come over to before the launch is called and you just wanna write global scope.launch. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, this is a totally different thing. You're like launching a, a new, you're creating a new coroutine scope, so this must be different. Well, no, not really, actually. Global scope, doing exactly what I did right here, global scope.launch, is exactly the same as writing launch dispatchers.default. So global scope will just reach into a thread pool, the thread pool called dispatchers, or the, the thread pool that is associated with the name default, dispatchers.default, and it just reaches into the thread pool and pulls up the threads. If your argument is that it's different, it's not different. And just to actually show you, just to confirm for sure, before we do the global scope, I'm going to run both of these using dispatchers.default, and you'll see that the outcome is exactly the same. So I'm pressing shift F10 to run this again, should see starting the parent job. Now we'll see the two jobs complete, dispatcher default worker one, worker number three, completed in 3300 milliseconds. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm gonna cancel the job. So I just ran the app again, I'm gonna cancel it, job was canceled, everything works good. So that's all good. So I just wanted to make sure, I wanted to remove the argument that you might be having that the, the thread pool is different or the dispatcher is different. It's not, it's going to be exactly the same. So let's get rid of this dispatchers.default call here now. And now I'm going to do global, oops, global scope.launch and do global scope.launch on both of these. And now let's run this and see what happens. So first I'm going to, I'm going to run it without cancellation. So the app is rerunning right now. Notice right away, starting parent job, and it says that it's done right away. So right away, you, there's an issue here, right? Because the invoke on completion is being invoked pretty much immediately. It's saying job starts, job finishes. It's almost as if these global, these global scope jobs are not being detected by the parent job, which is essentially what's happening. Because that's, what, that's the problem with the global scope. It doesn't sync up with the parent that the jobs are created in. And then you can see down in the log here that it says after the job is supposedly completed, you have work one done and work two done. So they're, they're essentially operating independently of the parent job, which is definitely not what, we, what you want. And now let's rerun the app again, and I'm gonna cancel them and see what happens. So pressing Shift F10 to run the app again. I'm gonna wait till I see starting parent job. There it is, I'm gonna press cancel. Notice canceling it does nothing. So the, the problem here is because the job pretty much completes right away, so there's nothing to even cancel. Um, and this, uh, you know, you might be, you might also have an argument, well, oh, well maybe if there was like a third job in here and this like delayed, you know, 3,000 or 4,000 milliseconds also. Um, yeah, you would be able to cancel it then, but the only thing that would be canceled is the job that was run in this launch. Basically, these get started and they're out into infinity. The parent job doesn't know anything about them. It has no association with them. So if anything happens to the parent or to anything else within that job scope or that job world, these global globally ran jobs are just, they don't know anything. They just do their own thing totally independent. So I think that like global scope isn't all bad. I just think that generally speaking, probably like we're talking like 99% of use cases, you're not going to want to use global scope because it doesn't sync with the parent. And also it causes the parent not to wait for completion properly. Because if you have a globally scoped job that's launched inside of a parent, the parent basically doesn't know it exists. So it just, it like completes its whole run of whatever it's going to do 
without looking and seeing if those globally scoped jobs also completed. And then also, obviously, if the parent job gets canceled, the globally scoped ones continue running, which you probably don't want. So those things are not good, but I can still see that maybe in some scenarios you'd want to launch a globally scoped job. I'm trying to think of, of an example off the top of my head, but if you, you know, if you had something in your application that only happened uh, very, like it didn't happen very often, but if the user happened to do the thing that doesn't happen very often, and you wanted to know that the user did that thing that doesn't happen very often, you wanted to know for sure, for certain, regardless of anything else that was going on, maybe you would want to think about having a globally scoped job that, that got launched. I'm trying to think of a practical example, and I really can't, but that's that's the best I can come up with on the spot. Maybe like some kind of analytics tracking, something like that, that like doesn't happen often, but you as the developer or maybe the company that you're working for, you definitely want to know that that thing happened. It's like crucial that you know that that thing happened. So you want to essentially launch like an independent job that doesn't depend on anything else. And you want that thing to run to completion. That would that would be the only scenario that I can really think of. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what is going on in the world right now. If you are anywhere in the world, you are suffering from this coronavirus thing. It's There's pretty much no country that has any exceptions. Currently, uh, even in Canada, where I am right now, I'm on the west coast of Canada, we are in what's called like quarantine. People aren't supposed to leave their houses. If you do go out, you have to stay like two meters apart. Um, I'm not saying there's anything bad with this. I actually agree with this, but I just wanted to bring up that it's happening. So because this is happening and because everybody is quarantined right now, I decided to do a sale on my website. So if you go to codingwithmitch.com and go to become a member up here, you can scroll down and see the different kind of tiers that we have. The best one is the founding member subscription, which is normally $240 a year Canadian, which if you're in the US, it's significantly less. It's like 40% or 30 or 40% less because the Canadian dollar isn't as good. But with this subscription, you get access to all of my courses, unlimited access, video downloads for offline viewing. You get all the source code, obviously, Discord channel access, and um, also as a bonus for this founding member subscription, you're guaranteed to pay the same rate for life. So even if I was to suddenly increase my, my subscription cost, no matter what, you're paying the same rate. The founding member subscription isn't gonna last forever. I plan on having it around maybe till the end of this year, I'm thinking, um, just because I just launched the website last year, so I'm trying to get build a, a good member base before I remove this subscription. So the discount that I'm offering, if you scroll down here, it's a discount code Corona that's automatically applied to the founding member subscription. You can see that you get 365 days of unlimited access. Usually it costs $240 a year, but now it's I'm giving it to you for 20% off, which is $192 Canadian per year. So you're only charged once a year. You can cancel the subscription immediately as soon as you register and you still get access to that 365 days. So what, what kind of courses do I have to offer? Well, if you go on to the courses section here, I have all kinds of courses from UI testing, unit testing with JUnit, Architecture is kind of what I specialize in these days. I like uh, MVI architecture, which is basically the same as MVVM architecture, but with some added structure, some added organizational features, I would say. That's why it's my favorite. Uh, the Powerful Android Apps course with Jetpack Architecture. This is very, very popular. Kotlin, Coroutines, Navigation Components, Dagger, MVI, Repository Pattern, Room Persistence Library, basically all the newest and best stuff that's out there right now for Android. Hopefully this video helped you with your coroutine knowledge. I know Global Scope was kind of confusing to me. Some people said don't use it. Some people said they don't know why not to use it. Now you know, now I know. Let's go out and uh, build some stuff.